So here's my velocity function, okay? Um, it says the first two times it's speed, so speed, do I care about sign at the moment? I, I don't, okay? So positive, negative, doesn't matter, is half its maximum speed. Now I've already calculated maximum speed, right? So for part C, I'm trying to solve for V equals, sorry, yeah, V equals what? Is that all? You told me not to worry about sign, right? So in fact, it's plus or minus 5 pi. Plus <coughs> or minus 5 pi. Because if I hit 5 pi, obviously that's half. But if I hit negative 5 pi, that is also half. Because it doesn't, I don't care about direction. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, okay, all right. So, so now that I'm solving for that, okay, it probably would help me. Let me really point out two things. Number one, I say this. Do you notice I say this all the time? Right? I don't launch straight into an equation. I say what I'm trying to solve. Okay, I can't advise that enough. Um, secondly, I, I make a lot of arguments from a graph. Okay? They have never asked me, or they sometimes ask me to graph, but they seldom, they seldom do. Okay? They might provide you a graph if you're lucky. I think you're kind of kidding yourself to not draw a graph. Like It's so hard to wrap your head around something without a picture to look at. So this is the picture I'm interested in now, right? I'm interested in the velocity function. So let's draw a quick and dirty velocity function. That's what it looks like. So what's my amplitude? 10 pi. And that means that's negative 10 pi. Okay. So when I have a look, this is really nice. When I have a look at this, I have a geometric way to say, what am I trying to solve? What am I trying to solve? Where is the first time I hit 5 pi? There, right? There's 5 pi because it's exactly half, right? So I'm going forward in time there. And I know, by the way, what these times are, don't I? Don't I know what those times are? The end point here, the period is 24 seconds. So what are these guys? 6 and 18. Yes? Okay, so good. My first answer should be like about half of 6. I know, I know it's going to be between 0 and 6, right? Where's my next answer? Between 6 and 12. Okay, so I have to appeal to this, right? Like remember, us, the point of us putting plus or minus is that I could go to the next time I hit 5 pi, but it's all the way over there. Right? I've hit the half, half the maximum speed uh, one, two, three times since then. So here is the second time, right? Here's the first, and here's the second. Okay. So I've got an answer between 0 and 6. And I have an answer between 6 and 12. Do you agree with that? <coughs> so now at least I have an idea. You know when we talk about sense checks, right? That was a sense check just there. It was a pre-sense check because I already know, okay, I've got a rough domain in which to find solutions. Okay, so now I'm going to set up an equation. Okay, if I'm solving for V equals 5 pi, I'm just going to let, I'm going to make a substitution over there, right? So I'm going to say 10 pi cos pi on 12t equals 5 pi. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to divide through by 10 pi, which of course gives me this. Now, in fact, you could have seen that before, right? You could have noticed that because of course you're going to be half. This just, this ignores the amplitude actually. Half is relative to, like your top speed might not have been 31.4159 meters, it could have been 100 meters per second, or 2,000 meters per second, or whatever, you're still going to hit half at the same time, okay? Um, you can give me an exact value for this, can't you? Pi on 3. Pi on 12t equals pi on 3. Yep, yeah, do we agree with that? So I will divide both sides by pi on 12, which gives me, I believe, 4. Yeah? Does that make sense? Does that confirm? It does, doesn't it? Have a look as well. What's really nice about the fact that you've done your graph here is you can see, oh yeah, it takes me a bit longer to reach that part of the time, right? This interval is a bit shorter than this one, which you'll know even better than me probably because your graph will be a bit better if you're using a template, that kind of thing. So, fantastic. I've got my first answer. Now I'm going to have a look at the second one and my diagram informs the fact that I can say, here's the first time and now I'm going to work out the second time. Okay, so tell me what your equations are. Use words and describe what your equations are solving. I'm now going to say 10 pi cos. Okay, that next line is going to be the same except for the sign, right? So I'm going to end up at this, um, bless you. I'm going to end up at this point. 
And again, you can give me an exact value for that, can't you? I've heard one answer. I don't see a, a lot of resounding, oh yes, of course. How do I work this out? How do I work this out? When you, when you do inverse cos, right, your calculator should hand you, it'll hand you clearly a decimal mess, right? But it will hand you this because what's the domain of, as opposed to sine inverse, what's the, sorry, range of cos inverse? It's not to pi, isn't it? It's not to pi, and this is from not to pi. Yes? Okay, so I'm gonna divide through. What do I get? What's I divide through? Eight? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. So you can see that. Um, another way, uh, apart from using cos inverse, and by the way, that answer, of course, does make sense, is you can look at the symmetry here, just like we did over here, right? Have a look. Let's see how good your diagram is, right? I said it takes four seconds to do that, right? Four seconds to do that. So therefore, when you have a look at the gaps, right? Have a look at this gap here. What's that gap? Two. That's two seconds, right? But because of the symmetry of the cosine function, right? That two seconds is the same as that two seconds, isn't it? <laughs> so when you go down to here, that's when you should hit uh, negative five pi meters per second for the first time. So six plus two, that'll give you eight at that point, which confirms what you've got. Okay? okay. If your graph is good enough to make an argument off, which I'd expect it's you know, a third of a page, you can you, you refer to it, that kind of thing, and you can say by the symmetry of, you know, this is, uh, this value here is six minus two, so this value is six plus two, then absolutely, yes you can. But I will point out, most people's graphs are not good enough to do that. And you have a look at my graph. My graph is the size of an A3 page. That's why it's so easy to make the argument of it. Um, this, of course, by the way, I'll point out, wasn't arduous, it wasn't hard, like it was, it was pretty quick, in fact. So I don't think there's any reason to necessarily avoid that. Okay.